Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio. Today I'm sharing with you another page in my watercolor journal. This journal is made by Arteza and it comes in a pack of two or three and it's about nine inches by five inches or something like that. And I've just been doing pages in it off and on during our, well I started during our hashtag event called Watercolor Workout and then I've been doing them in the month of July 20. 20 because we have AJOS 2020 water as our hashtag from Art Drive Sharing this month. So I got out a um, product, well a few products here, but um, I got out some products that I haven't used in a really, 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 really long time. And of course, you know, since we're doing water soluble mediums, fluid mediums this month, I wanted to do something water soluble. So I decided to play in my book with some Frisket, which is a a, prod, a rubbery stuff that you put on a watercolor paper before you start to leave white space. You know, I, I struggle with white space. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't leave it. So when you put this on first, and let it dry before you watercolor, then you can rub it off at the end. Um, however, this frisket is super old. As you can see, it's um, it's gummy, it's thick. Uh, I've had it for a long time, so it's a little bit, I don't know, I think it's past its prime and I need to throw it away. But what I'm applying it with is this weird wood brush and that's it's what it's designed for is to apply this type of stuff because if you use frisket or masking fluid on a brush the rubberiness of it ruins your brush it just you can't get it out and it just gets all gummy and gross and so finding something else to put it on with is probably your best bet i also have a thing there up in the right hand corner that you can see that is also masking fluid or frisket and it's in a fine line bottle and I didn't actually open it but um, that you can apply with a little fine line tip and I'm, I've had that for a long time too and I'm not sure if it's gummied up and gross or not so, but I didn't open it I ended up just using this applicator that's like kind of wood and then just scraping it off at the end with a, a paper towel so then I'm getting out this stuff that's um, I think it's made by Lindy Stamp Gang. I think that's what it's called. And I've had it for probably six or seven years. And I've hardly ever used it. But it's it's a powder. It's a powdered pigment with mica in it. And it's it's water soluble. It's, it's basically powdered watercolor. So it's shimmery as well. And I think that's what people were really attracted to. They also made sprays. And I'll go ahead and look and put links below if I find the products that I used. Um, I'm sure they are still making it because the sprays are super popular. They're shimmery um, ink sprays and people just loved them. I know there's tons and tons of videos using Lindy's Magical Sprays for sure. And probably a lot of them with the powders too. But I haven't seen it recently. You know, things, things go in cycles and... I'm sure people are still using them, but I just haven't seen a lot of people making videos with them. So, um, yeah, that's all I can say about it. So I took this little this little spoon scoop that I have that I use for powdery stuff, and I put some of the colors. I have three tubes of them, and one of them isn't shimmery. It's called Boardwalk, and it's not shimmery. It's got pastel colors that are flat. So it's basically the same stuff without the mica. And then the other two packs, I think one of them is called Autumn something. And the other one might be called something with flowers. And they have the shimmery ones in there. <clears throat> so when you get to the end of the video, you'll see some shimmer in these. But I will explain later why it's not as shimmery as it should be. So this drawing that I made of a rose and leaves, I made... A while ago like I think when it was time for watercolor workout um, I drew this and then I never painted it so I had like a couple empty pages in my book and I just wanted to fill it up so the first thing I did was to erase a lot of the drawing so that it was just really faint on there um, you can do this with any type of watercolor uh, 
thing that you're planning on making, if you you want to uh, have some lines there that you can see but probably can't be seen on the video, you can erase your drawing until it's almost nothing if you've done it with a soft graphite. And then I'm using three different colors of pinkish purpley colors. Um, I don't remember what the names of any of them are actually. They have fun names like I, I think I think one of them that I end up using is Tibetan teal um, I think but I will for sure have links below the video if these products are available with the names so that you can find them if you really 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 want to try them out so after I painted the three different colors on my rose and my rosebud I decided to paint the background next when you're doing watercolor I mean I'm, I'm no pro here I'm not teaching you how to do watercolor but they, the watercolors will bleed into each other. Um, if you touch a wet area with another wet area. So I thought moving to the background next to fill that in would give me time for the rose and the bud to dry before I worked on the leaves, if that makes sense. And at first I was just taking the magical, which this is the boardwalk one that I used. It doesn't have any shimmer in it. Um, I think it's called Popsicle Purple or something like that. Um, I took it and the water and mixed them together and just started to paint it on like a paint. But I realized that I was getting streaks when I was doing that. Um, it, was, it was absorbing into the paper really fast. And I think that that's half to do with the, the matte quality of this particular color and also half to do with the paper because the paper in this this book it has a mattifying um, property to it it seems to absorb and and make things matte pretty pretty easily and absorb color too like it it makes the colors not as bright and I've tried all different types of watercolors in this book and so far that has been my experience that the colors get kind of dulled by the paper so I almost think maybe that I should use this book for uh, mixed media instead of watercolor. But I've already started with the watercolor, so I'm just going to finish with the watercolor. It's, it's a cool shape and it's very well made, but I do think that the paper, there's something weird going on with the paper. So I'm also, as I'm doing this uh, purple background, light purple background. I'm mixing in a little bit of the magenta color in with it in some places just to make it more interesting and more varied. Because who wants just one solid color? I don't. I don't want it. So then I move on to the leaves and I have two different colors of green and a teal um, color. I know one of them is called shamrock or something like that. The lighter one, I think, is something to do with shamrock. But they're they're pretty, they're sparkly, and I'm trying to make variation in the leaves so that they look more like leaves should. If you just paint it with one solid color, um, then you don't have any highlights and shadows. So, and remember that frisket is on there, so that the areas that you see light right now, um, that's where the frisket is. It's covering them up and sealing them up so that I can't paint that particular paper. And so I'm not having to be careful about where I place the paint. I'm just going right over the top of everything and then trusting that that rubbery stuff will protect my paper underneath and when I remove it I'll have white space. So I'm probably, if I really want to get into using Frisket, I'm going to need to buy some new, um, a new package of it though, because it's, it's very gummy and gross and it smells bad. I don't like the smell of it. It smells almost, I don't know, rotten kind of, and that could just be the product that it's made out of some type of latex, or it might be that maybe mine is actually rotten. I don't know. I'm also adding in that teal in the darkest parts and letting it blend out with the other two colors. Um, and right now this is looking super shimmery, although 
you can't tell on the screen because that's the way that video works. So you'll have to wait until you see it in the photos at the end of the video, the close-up photos, you'll be able to see some of the shimmer. So I'm continuing to do that. I'm continuing to um, paint all the leaves and fill everything in. Something that I kind of enjoy with watercolor is splatters. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of splatter here in a minute after I finish this last leaf. What I didn't know though was that the background was still wet when I splattered and so I ended up getting kind of some of it kind of spreading out a lot. I guess I should have realized that the background would still be wet at this point. It hasn't been very much time. This is the reason that I struggle with watercolor because I have no patience. I just don't have patience to wait for things to dry on their own. Um, I get very, very impatient. I decide to go back in with some of that darkest color again and add another layer, um, trying to get a lot of variation of color and highlight in the rows, um, putting the darkest color down where the petals would have gone down into the flower, trying to make it more three-dimensional and interesting. And I think it looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, touching up a little bit where I missed some spots. And then eventually I'm going to splatter. I decide to splatter with the teal color. It's a really pretty color, gorgeous color. And I, I like its shimmeriness too. It has a cool shimmery effect to it. And adding it in a little bit in a few places to even darken up some of those spots even more where the shadows would be. I want a lot of variation in color, variation in lightness and darkness. So I set that aside. I still have a ton of the magicals left. Like I thought I was only putting a tiny bit in the palette, but I ended up having a ton. So I decided that I would use this scrap of watercolor paper that's sitting on my desk and make a background with, with the magicals and a stencil. So I use some pixie spray, which is a stencil adhesive. You spray it on and then you let it dry for a couple minutes. I just kind of wave it in the air and then put it down and it seals to the paper pretty well. Um, so then I just, I start going over the stencil with the different colors of magicals that I have. And I wanna blend them together. I wanna to make it wet and watery and interesting. And so I'm mixing the teal with the green. I'm mixing the other green and putting that in and then um, on the other side, I end up using the pinks and purples, just trying to make an interesting and fun background with this stencil that has, uh, I think those are called arabesque shapes. It's a Moroccan stencil. I end up mixing two of the pinks together and it makes almost the same color as the other pink that I had, which is weird. <laughs> I should have used them separately, but I get all that on there and um, set it aside to dry. And then I'm back with my page and I start to remove the, the frisket. And remember my frisket's old and nasty and all that's happening, I mean, I am removing the frisket, but all that's happening is I'm peeling up the paper as well in some places. Um, maybe I should have let this dry overnight. Maybe I, Maybe it wouldn't have made a difference. It just seemed like the top layer of the paper wanted to peel away along with the frisket. It seemed like it attached itself to it. And I was like annoyed. So after I peeled all the frisket, then I went, came back in with a sanding uh, block to smooth out the paper to get rid of all the edges that were, were popping up from where I had been peeling some of the paper on accident. And when I did this, 
it took away the shimmer. I sanded off the top layer of the color and ended up with a lot less shimmer than I had originally had. So the mica came off of the page, which kind of annoyed me. <laughs> I was like, come on. So then I decided also to uh, maybe make this a little bit more like an illustration by adding back in some color. And this is the teal color again, and I'm using kind of illustration marks with my very smallest watercolor brush, which is a size two round. And um, I think that this helps. The page was just sort of a little bit ruined by the, the top layer of the paper peeling off in some places. Um, I would ha I'll have to do more experimentation and see if it was the frisket, if it's the paper, if it's my impatience of not waiting long enough for everything to get completely dry, probably the latter. Because <laughs> I can't imagine that the chemistry of, of the paper or the paint would change, I mean the frisket would change. Although it's possible because that frisket's been in the drawer for like five years. I think it's probably just me not being patient enough. But in the pictures at the end, you will see the shimmeriness of this teal color because I'm not going to sand it again. So you'll end up with some of the shimmer that most of the paints had with the exception of the lavender color. And I guess if I was really fussed up about it, I could have just went and painted over everything again with the shimmery paint. But I just wanted to add a little bit of illustration lines and be done with it. And yeah. This is the thing about my channel for you guys who are new or maybe don't know this. Even if I mess something up, even if I don't think that I like exactly how something turned out, I don't not post it. I don't not make a video on it because we're here to learn and I'm learning along with you. So if you can watch something that I do that I'm not 100% happy with and understand um, where I might have made the mistake, where I might have made a different choice and learn something from that and you don't have to do the experiment yourself, then I think that's a win. <laughs> so um, this is a pretty page. I wish the paper hadn't peeled and I'm not sure why I did, but you're learning along with me, right? So I hope you are enjoying this and we'll give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe, turn on your notification bells, all those things. So now I removed the stencil and as you can see some of it bled underneath but I was fine with that. I had really juicy juicy paint and there was still some of the magical paint on the stencil so I spritzed the stencil with some water and I put a regular sheet of text weight paper over it that's just a scrap sitting on my desk and picked it up off the stencil which made another second pretty piece of paper with the opposite and even my under paper got some of the interesting effects there too so I could use all those things together for collage and they would all be interesting together so that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.